Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Welcome. I'm Amy M. <laughs> um, I want to just take a moment first to just kind of energize the moment with some intuitive toning within your own head. I was using the singing bowls, but I'm sitting in my car because it's nice and warm. And so I still want to bring in that energy. So wherever you're at, take a moment. Just take some nice deep breaths. I hear a tone in your in your head. I'm gonna do mine. Hey 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 um. That's one of our best vices is our own vibration. And so with that, I wish you and your family, the land around you, your animals, your plants, the air, and your environment be healthy and supported and uplifted. And may your goals and your dreams and your manifestations be coming to fruition. Okay, so today's video is a little extra on the nine day week calendars. So I'm going to share with you guys. I, I wrote a lot of stuff down, so I'm going to grab it. Brought it out here. So my last video, I mentioned um, another channel called Geometria. I've mentioned several other channels and I'm just going to re-shout out them again. So the Geometria channel is Geometria News Effects. The other channels would be uh, Camero. Aho, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but he uh, does tons of videos. They are so detailed and so um, very educational as to the truth about the indigenous Americans, what are called black Americans or African Americans, and also Dane Calloway. And there's many others, like you check it out on YouTube. But on these specific three channels, they are about educating us to some of the stuff that's going on in the world that is quote unquote behind the scenes, but in our faces and we're starting to figure it out. We're starting to figure out everything doesn't really add up. And so, um, when I watched his video, uh, when I watched Geometria News Effects, I was just like floored because I already knew that there was ritual and basically magic going on with us. And I think I've kind of figured it out, but um, he goes into like the rituals of the numbers and how that's why he calls it Geometria News Effects. So when we're watching the news and we're watching the media and we're getting uh, all this information, they're actually using magic. Um, in the numbers, um, even in the wording, to affect our emotions, I believe. I believe that what has been going on for a long time, and I've related it back to the feminine divine, and how everything started with the feminine, and I, I wanna drop a couple videos there as well. So um, one is a long time ago, I had watched a video called History of the Witches, but another great one is called The Burning Times, which is free on YouTube. It's an actual movie, it's a documentary, and it's written by uh, professors that studied feminine history and <clears throat> the history of the witches. Okay, so with all of that information, basically, I think I've figured something out. I've, I've figured out a few things. So before learning about uh, Geometry and news effects and what he does is he goes into the numbers and certain numbers and certain numbers relate to certain prime numbers and ultimately I was reading one of my journals where I wrote God is a number and so um, and I know in my last video I talked about number and how the first part of that is numb and I think it's because 
we are actually numb to certain information. So with that said, this is a lot. So thanks for listening. After I had seen that video, I started doing my own research. And from what I believe and from what I've researched, everything comes from the female, including magic, including all the, the elemental manipulation. And I think in the beginning, when we studied nature um, and the teachers were women, I think that we knew this code, so to speak, um, the vibration of thought, of uh, because all is mental, that's one of the laws, so the, the, the power and the vibration of thought, the power and vibration of vibration, which is um, the movement right? We think action is movement, but even when we're sitting still, there's a vibration happening. Our heart is beating, our blood is going through our body. And so it creates a certain vibration and whatever skin tone you are also carries a certain vibration. Your name carries a certain vibration. That's where numerology comes in. Your birthday carries a certain vibration. That's where astrology comes in. I'm coming back to all of that too. It's just so cool. So when he started explaining about the numbers, I had already came to the theory that technology is how they altered our DNA. Like it wasn't like they created us and, and altered our DNA. They created us and then taught us in a certain way that through compensation, we altered our own DNA because If we came in with already high DNA and we were taught correctly, we would just be like, we'd all be like pharaohs and, and Thoth and, and the, the great masters. But because of compensation, how we're taught, then we naturally compensate, not knowing, right? Because we haven't been taught. So in this i've come to the recognition that with the feminine being first we have we have the number nine so we have the swirls and we have the number nine and i noticed in certain words in the geometria because he also created a website where you can put in certain words and you can see what numbers they add up to and so certain words like money and love um, balanced out to the base number nine Yet, love carries a slightly higher vibration, even in the numbers, okay? So, I started doing a little research, and I started thinking about it, and I was like, okay, if we used to go by the moon, and we used to have 13 months, like, what's up with that? There must be something connected to the moon that we're not being shown, and I, and I did talk about that in the last one. So... I also was watching Robert Zephyr, who is an anthropologist. I'm also an anthropologist. I may not have the credentials that he has, but he, he has some good research. I just feel that his personal opinion is somewhat biased. But in this video, he uh, the video was about the goddess. And in this video, he actually showed a picture. So through Malama Zogbe's book, the civils, she shows in there um, certain coins that have females on them. And for example, Earthren is a name of one of the civils because there was a coin with a sibyl on it, a female, divine feminine, and the name was Earthren. And so I actually believe that we've gotten the name Earth from Earthren, right? She must have had some qualities that reminded whoever gave her the name of what we see around us. Now, in, in that video of the goddess that Robert Zephyr had put out, in this video in particular, he talks about the seven intellectual um, things, and um, they're all named after the feminine, including Geomatria. Geomatria is actually the name of a sibyl. So what I did is I broke down, um, okay, here are my notes of what I want to talk about today. But I broke down 
I went to um, the guy who um, talks about Geomatria news effects and everything that he picked out. His name is Zach uh, Hubbard. And as I was listening to him, I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. Um, if the correct, if not the correct numbers, but the highest vibrational numbers resonate at nine and this new magic that's out is all about numbers and colors and I mean there's so much misinformation that um, even down to the names of the symbols so the seven um, okay, here's the new moon my moon calendar that I made up uh, gosh darn it where are my notes okay I was talking about Okay, so the seven intellectual um, things are grammar, wait, no, dialogue, so dialectica, mystica, there's no T in her name, mystica, then we have um, grammatica, and we have arithmetica, and we have Oh, um, ret ret rhetorica for rhetoric. Like rhetoric is considered an intellectual um, knowledge because it's basically about talking people into into things. Rhetoric is about talking people into things, and so these were taught by the mothers. I think um, he even says the same thing in the video. It's just that he kind of. I think is bias as far as like who they are and where they came from and what it means. And let's see, astrologia. And um, I know I'm missing one. Okay, I'm going to pause this really quick because I want to find my notes. I found them. They were in a different book. <laughs> okay. So, and then before I get into this, so along the same lines, I, I had heard about the 13 moon calendar. I had heard about the nine day weeks and then I found an etymology channel on YouTube where he goes into the moon because month comes from moon and when we say we're getting our monthly we're relating it to the moon that we get once a month so I did all this several things um, the day the months that are named throughout the year you know that we have September, October, November, and December, which sept means seven, October is eight, November means nine, and December is 10. But those are named those, I think also to mess with us um, because it's the ninth month, but it actually means seven. It's the 10th month, but it actually means eight. It's the 11th month, but it actually means nine. And so in, um, on the Geomatria News Effects channel, he kind of talks about the numbers and that type of thing. And so um, in the etymology video, he breaks down that yes, we used to have nine day weeks. And here's something interesting. The seventh day, when we had the nine day weeks, the seventh day was considered kind of auspicious. Like it was a very, it was a day that you weren't supposed to do any, any ritual or do any, um, like, uh, it was basically a day of rest, but it was more because of the energy of the day than anything else. So, um, And then months possibly was named after the goddess. Um, many months, uh, and in all my research, like the more and more I dig, the more and more the goddess seems to come back to a basic general goddess, creator, mother, mother of the sky. And then um, what it looks like is through time and through different languages and different cultures, that same original goddess is then broken down um, and given different names. So like January is named after Janus. 
and then um, so and June is named after a goddess April and May also possibly named after goddesses Sybils um, okay so what I did is I took I I was thinking okay so the 13 moon calendar so the moon takes 18.6 years to do its orbital orbital inclination to go around our planet completely it takes 18.6 years well 18 equals 9 and if you add it all together um, 9 plus 6 is 15 which is 6 so it still breaks down to a feminine number okay also side note Venus will do an elliptical formation that also turns into the flower of life but relates to the number 666 so I have a theory that they have scared us about the number 666 but it actually relates to Venus and the feminine and also like curly hair uh, or cowlicks because uh, those look like nines or sixes and if you were to do six nines upside down would it look like I mean three nines when it also look like three sixes I mean I think we're really scared of a number that might have more to it than we actually know okay so 18 breaks down to nine and then um, 28.8 days, nine day weeks. Uh, that was from watching the video about the calendar. And then, so I started thinking about it. We have 24 hours in a day, 24 equals six. But if we had 27 hours in a day, that would equal nine, right? Two plus seven is nine. So I started thinking about it and I was like, if we used to go by the moon, we probably went by the moon more than anything. Is it possible that we had 90 minute hours? We know that after 90 minutes of thinking, the brain needs a break. Like the brain will itself kind of slow down, regroup itself so that it can go for another 90 minutes. Isn't that a coincidence? Is it possible that we used to study our bodies so well that we were aware of this and so we actually had a 90 minute hour instead of a 60 minute hour? So if you take our days that we have now, which are 24 hours, and you add up all the minutes, the minutes I want to make sure I tell it to you guys correctly. I figured this all out. But where, where did I write it? Goodness sakes. Here we go. Okay. So in a 24 hour day, there are 144 minutes. And 144 breaks down to 9. In a 27 hour day, we'd have 1,620 minutes which breaks down to nine, okay? So the nine is still there with the 24 hours. Now, if you take, you were to take an 18 hour day, so an 18 hour day would equal nine, but the 18 hour day would be 18 hours of 90 minute hours. So you'd either end up with 27 hours, as we know them now, 60 minutes, or you'd end up with an 18 hour day, okay? Now, if you take all those minutes, no. If we were to have a 90 minute hour or a 27 hour day, okay, either way, because we get three hours added on, or we'd have an extra, or we'd have 90 minute hours, okay? However you look at this. In a 365 day year, it would give us 591,300 minutes, which if you add that together, comes to nine. Well, if you take the minutes that we have in a 24 hour day, it comes down to 5,025,600 5 minutes, which actually breaks down to nine. Now. If you take the minutes 
that would be with an 18 hour day, 365 days of the year, and subtract it from 365 days a year, 60 minute hour. I hope I said that correctly. So if we had a 90 minute hour day and you turn that into the whole year, and then you take that amount and you subtract it from the normal 365 day, 24 hour day that we have with 60 minutes, and you subtract the lower number, which would be the 525, it turns out to be 3,650 minute difference, which is 365. Okay. So what I figured out is if we were to do that, we would end up with 40.5 extra days. 40.5 equals nine. <laughs> so I actually think that the magic is we used to focus on this number nine. We knew that there was something magical about it. And I think 365. 5. Um, I think that by us not actually knowing about the moon and its cycles, because if it's an 18.6 year cycle, that means if you start tracing the moon from say the beginning of time or from a certain point, you are able to see where the moon's going to be what astrological movement is going to happen in the sky. You're going to be able to know um, your own body, you know, and that's the other thing. And like we talk about the, the maidens and what that looks like. Well, when you, if you are a woman and you're actually um, young and you're looking towards the future as a maiden, or you're young, so there's a maiden, there's uh, wait a minute. There's like the, the girl, the maiden, the crone, right? And that's also related to the moon, but also our own moon or our own evolutionary system as a, as a woman will, will graduate those three things in each stage. So let's just say you're in the middle of your life and you have a moon. Well, right before your moon, you're going to have some swelling. You might have some mood swings. You might have some cramping, which is kind of like when we were younger and we, and we were just kind of moving along. And then you're on your moon and you're, you're actually like a miracle. You're having blood come out of your body and you, you, you're, you're releasing. That's almost like also having a child. It's not the same. I am not saying it's the same, but there are some similarities in what's happening with your body. And then when you're finished with your moon, it's almost as if you're stepping into the crone stage because now you're healing and you're preparing for your next moon. Okay. So with the moon cycles and my idea of how it went back to the feminine first and how everything came from the female, the one thing I couldn't figure out was the planets. We have nine planets. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, there's hints everywhere. So, I created a 13 moon calendar. Um, and this is a 13 moon calendar. I created a nine day week calendar. So from the etymology video, and, and I figured this, this is why we call it a new moon. So the months would start with the new moon. And so we just had a new moon uh, about two weeks ago, okay? So, here's what I created. I hope it's all... Don't look at the top one. We're just looking at the bottom one. Because the bottom ones are recreated. So, the month would start... This is really hard to see because it's so small. So, the month would start... Get it to come in a little bit. The new moon, right? And we typically have a new moon for about three days two to three days. So each new moon and full moon, each um, 
movement of the moon looks the same for about three days. So we would start with the new moon, and so the darkest moons, and then it starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter. But this would be the nine day week. It would start with the new moon. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, what's hard to see? Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Hopefully, you guys can see that all right. Um, and then I have this theory. I have a theory that we might not have worshipped outside of ourselves. Like we talk about, like we worship the moon or they worship the sun. I don't know if we worshipped. I don't even know if we had the concept of worship back then, but. What I thought is we would notice the moon and we would notice the sun, but what we actually, if we were to worship something, we would worship the earth. Um, that would be our first day because that's what we're on. So with the new moon, um, in this picture, actually the first day of the new moon um, would fall on Mars day and then the, okay. So... This looks like the first day, but I feel like, anyhow, it is the first day because it's the new moon. But my theory is that we would start with moon day and then we go to Mar uh, Mars. And then after Mars is Venus. After Venus is Jupiter. After Jupiter is Mercury. After Mercury is Saturn, after and then Jupiter, then Uranus, then Pluto, and then the moon day again. So when I figured this out, what ends up happening is the seventh day would actually be, would fall on the day of Uranus or Uranus. And so I'm wondering if, or Uranus or Uranus. So I'm wondering if, that's because Uranus is um, a unique type of energy and so we would know that and we wouldn't really do anything on that day. It's like an auspicious energy. It's an energy of anything is possible. Um, and then Pluto and then the first day to me or the ninth day would be the moon day. Um, I have some work to do on this but basically so we have one week, two weeks, and then the third week would be the end of the month, and then we'd start again with the new moon. So you could see over here that I put like, this is the first month, this would be month two, and then it would just continue. And so we would end up with one more extra month with about 27 to 28 days. I know I put 40 in there, um, but that's still dividing it by the times and the hours that we have now. Um, is it possible that we used to have like three hours more a day? There used to be a time when they would just jump the date to make up for time missing. And I know we do that now with um, leap year, but, and I know the Mayans had a day out of time. And I wonder if that relates to the moon. So I'm going to do a little more study, but I wanted to share this with you guys because we do have nine planets and I would, I would guess that when we were teaching back in the day, that's where we would come up with the nine days because we would need nine days to recognize the nine planets, um, and, and the ritual of the moon or the, um, the ritual, the, um, um, the procession of the moon, the, the cycle of the moon, right? And so this is where I actually think we can shift. Like this is the original magic. Oh, I know what else. That's what I forgot. Okay. I think this is the original magic. Now, um, I wanted to share with you guys the other part where I put in the numbers of like Geomatria and that's the thing I forgot the names of the, the names of the sibyls that were in that video um I thought I wrote it on here I just remember them 
Um, you know what? I wrote it in these notes. Dialectica. Um, but I wanted to show you. So basically what I figured out is that I think grammatica equals nine and then geometry equals nine. But here's the thing. Geometry is short for geometria. Arithmetic or arithmetica would be where we actually use the shapes that are, are told to us in geometry. But geometry or geometria is language and symbols or language and numbers put together. So just in that, we're being slightly misled. We think geometry is a type of math. It is, but it's more of a language. Whereas arithmetic is math. The arithmetic is math. And then these are all named after sibyls. And we call it mystical, but the sibyl's name was Missica. There was no T in her name. And then rhetorica. Wait a minute. Dialogue and rhetoric are considered intellectual, like absolutely dialogue is necessary, but rhetoric, that means I think we used to teach rhetoric in the way so that we knew how to talk ourselves or heal ourselves through certain things that were scary or difficult, not to become something that is actually used as manipulation, but it is. I mean, a lot of what we see on the news as far as or what politicians say, it's a lot of rhetoric. It's just so that we hear words and then Excuse me. <laughs> and then we'll kind of go along with what sounds good. But ultimately, all of these things, I think, affect us because A, we're mistaught, and two, we don't really know about our, um, our compensation. And so the compensation works because it just does we naturally compensate. That's, that's, that's how actually intelligent our body is. Doesn't mean that we actually use our brains <laughs> to figure this stuff out, but we are these beings that are so intellectual and, and, um, complex that if, even with what I'm saying, right? Like, please research it. Ask me some questions. Share with me your information. Because I think in our culture that we have a lot of people who, and I mean, I'm not talking about like YouTube. I'm talking about like in our schools and in places where these people are supposed to know what they're talking about. Well, they're taught the same thing that we are. So they're teaching us what they have been taught. That doesn't mean that it's the correct information if that makes sense okay um i was really excited to share that with you guys because my theory is yes that by understanding the moon cycle understanding um numbers and we actually are very good at math i think that we're taught to be afraid of math because i think there's keys in math as well with numbers as we're learning as i'm learning um and the possibility of, you know, shifting it, even if it's in my own little world, creating my own nine day week, even if everyone else is going by the seven day week, um, I don't want to, <laughs> I want to change things up. So with that said, I'm going to share a little bit about, um, some of the changes I've been making personally to help with letting go of emotional attachments, letting go of uh, physical, like habitual attachments and, um, the results. So first off, I, I think I told you guys I started walking. Now I'm up to jogging. Just side note, like it's true what they say that if you stop wearing a bra, that your muscles behind your breasts get stronger. It's true because 
I was really surprised when I started jogging because <laughs> my boobs are really big and I had like no pain. I couldn't believe it. So there's that. That's awesome. And I noticed I had already shared with you that um, certain pains had moved through my body, but it's just increasing at, um, um, as far as like helping my body let go of certain pains. It's helped with my sleeping. Uh, it's helped with my general attitude. And then I stopped drinking coffee. I started drinking some matcha. I think I shared that a little bit with you guys. But I also found at um, Grocery Outlet, I don't know if you have one of those where you're at, but I started drinking this, which is, and I'm, this, I'm just sharing it with you. I'm not being promoted to share this. They're not paying me to advertise them. Like I said, it was at Grocery Outlet. <laughs> um, this green smoothie, organic Morgana. Moringa Morgana. I'm trying, I guess I'm trying to bring in that goddess too, right? <laughs> Moringa, Moringa, Moringa. Um, so this plant is super healthy and this actual little mixture right here has um, protein, fiber, it has all of the added benefits. So Moringa will help lower blood pressure, will help with skin. And I will say that that is something I noticed immediately is my skin is like, what? now thank you very much um there's just so much benefits in it uh i also got the pure green without the chocolatey cacao mix i do think this tastes a little better i've noticed with the straight green moringa it kind of has almost like a aftertaste of horseradish so it's a little bitey but I think it's good in um, like juices and I actually mix a little bit in with this one. Not too bad. And what else is the other thing? I think that's mostly it. I'm still working on not smoking cigarettes. It's really hard, but I'm getting closer. Oh, I think I told you all I stopped drinking coffee. I already said that. And that's really helped with um, my anxieties and um, just being able to be more present within myself. So that's my share for today. Oh, okay. Just a little, so we just had the convergence, um, with Saturn and Jupiter and a lot of people have put out tons of information. I'll just share with you the message I got, which is two things. Both of those planets were originally feminine planets. <laughs> They were not masculine, like both Saturn and Jupiter are considered masculine. Uh, they originally were not, they were both female. And so what I kind of saw is like this convergence of where the stern mother and the really giving mother kind of share with each other. Like Jupiter is giving an energy to the Saturn side, which is not necessarily don't be so strict, but recognize where you are being stripped and maybe you could ease off a little bit where it comes to our own personal selves. So when it comes to other people, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that, but we can be really hard on ourselves. We can be a uh, very, um, focused Saturn on our own selves, um, which can be very beneficial and help bring in manifestation, but can, but it can also create burnout. Um, my video just stopped like what it's not even on YouTube yet <laughs> and then as far as uh, Jupiter goes it's kind of the same thing where Jupiter doesn't have to be so lenient about things where Jupiter could be a little bit more strict and in, in our balancing like what it brings to us and then the other thing is just kind of some recognition as to stories that we've been told and what where they might actually come from or what they might actually mean and um, this is a powerful day. My guess is something something's gonna happen today because it's a bunch of double numbers. We got one, we got 12. So today, whenever you watch this, just so you know, today is 12, 22, 2020. And according to Geometry and News Effects, because of those numbers, probably something's gonna 
probably maybe something's going on but ultimately um this solstice this um convergence and this yule time i think is after this year asking us to really look at what is true what is possible and what can we actually do about it and um within balance within a balancing way a way that is with strict scrutiny but with some laxed um observation like I'm going to take a look at this and maybe open my mind a little bit and see if maybe there's some truth to it or if I can figure out something else. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching my video. Thanks for being here. I hope you, if you're celebrating the holidays, I hope you have a really good one and get some rest and some good food. And to those of you who've had a really hard year, uh, I hope you're feeling some relief and that it's almost over and that um, you are healthy and feeling stronger and um, keeping your body and your immune system strong. Yeah. Okay. Until next time. Peace.